Hey y'all. I think y'all are there. I'm sure y'all are coming on. Um I have about five minutes. And um and then we're gonna be getting it going. Oh I'm ready for it. <sighs> I'm just trying to get this back off my phone, y'all. Just bear with me. <laughs> I think I went too far. I scrolled over way too far. And now I can't find the... Ah, there's the original. All right. All right. So, um, y'all are just getting here. I don't know how to clear my screen. Get this off of here. I don't know how to get it off. <sighs> this is terrible. I don't know how to even get this stuff off. Okay, hold up. Hey, Andy. I see you there. So, first of all, I'm trying to get all this other stuff off my screen. And obviously, I don't know how to, so it's not working for me. Um. Anyway. Uh, we are going to be going live here in like a couple minutes. So I want to take a second and read to you my guest's um, bio. Tonight, I am speaking with the comedian, um, Mr. Andy Feds. Um, I want to read a little bit of his bio. So if you're listening, you kind of joined me a couple minutes early, then please share this. You do not want to miss it, okay? Um, Andy Feds was born HIV positive um, after contracting the virus from his mother who passed away from AIDS in 1998. Um, 20 years later, Andy created what he calls the Keeping It Positive Movement, which I absolutely love that, that whole title. It's a whole thing. Um, in which he uses his comedy, YouTube, and social media platforms to empower, entertain, and educate people about HIV and AIDS worldwide. Can everyone hear me okay? Normally I have on, I hope y'all can hear me, because normally I have on my headsets. <clears throat> um, his goal is to prevent his mother's death from happening to anyone else by creating an open forum to get people talking about HIV and AIDS without the fear of it being too embarrassing or too taboo. Y'all give me a thumbs up if you can hear me still. I hate that I don't know how to clear my screen. Let me try to turn on my Instagram on my computer as well. Can y'all hear me? Who's out there watching? Who's listening? Okay, thank you for the love. I appreciate that. So, with that being said, um, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and pull Andy up in here. Hey, y'all. I see y'all up in here. All right. I brought you through. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's up, Queenie? <laughs> Hi, Andy. How, How are, are you, are you? I'm good. How about yourself? I am wonderful. Look at you all wonderful. Look all red. Got your fedora on. Come in with all this energy. You know, you know. You know it's I'm crazy. loving I, it. I just spent like a good three hours with one of my buddies from high school uh, walking the strip. So I don't know how I got all this energy. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so okay. So you said what? Weather, so it's amazing. Where are you at? You on, you on Vegas? Yeah. Oh, yeah. lucky you, lucky you, lucky you. Yeah, All right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How's it going out there in Vegas? You know, Vegas still Vegas. Still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah no. Vegas, Vegas is going to Vegas no matter what. Yeah, it's yeah, going to Vegas. Exactly. All right. I'm so happy to have you with me tonight. Um, you, you, you have no idea. You can't even begin to imagine how excited I am about 
sharing this space with you and um, hearing about your story and, sure. and just sharing in your energy. Like you have this beautiful energy that um, just shines through all over the screen. So I love Take it. That. So Andy, I, I read your bio um, mm -hmm. to the viewers early on, um, but I know it really just, it doesn't tell half the story at all. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, so, Andy, the comedian at, as, and as well, like, um, mm -hmm. I love watching your videos. Uh -huh. I just was watching one a few minutes ago when you were like, um, Drop, when yeah. you're HIV mess, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is funny because guess what? I'm that way with my blood pressure medicine. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, gun it. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> CC on here. She's a advocate as well. And she follows CC too, but she was like, okay, hey. cool. Pick, pick up that medicine and you can still take it. But I'm like, yeah, yeah. blow it up. <laughs> See, I got a dog and she pee everywhere. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. You have a whole different thing playing in your head. Like, mm -mm, yeah, no, yeah. Mm -mm, yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. Oh. Sometimes I'll admit I blow mine off. So, yeah, in some regards, before I had a dog, sure. <laughs> but, right. Yeah. Medicine is expensive, so it you is. can't just be, you know. Yeah. All right, so so to the viewers, I want to just say thank you for joining me here at the Relationship Zone where we talk about all things love, life, and relationships. Um, I love talking about relationships with ourselves. Um, I love having an opportunity to share, you know, like life-changing conversations with people. Um, and then here we are, we have Andy Fed, who just blew me away with his, his boldness. And I think um, someone else contacted me about you, right? What is his name? What Michael. Is his name? Michael? Yeah. yeah. So Michael's in my inbox like, yo, you got to talk to, <laughs> you got to talk to this guy. And I'm like, really? Okay. Let me, let me check him out. Um, I had just interviewed Lady Bird, who is another advocate, um, with an amazing story. And so when you and I connected, I was like, oh yeah, let's do Let's do this right yeah. away. So yeah. here we are. <laughs> Lake Bird's the brand new homie because I've met her about maybe a month and a half ago. Did you? Yeah. Uh, she, she is like, she is like straight, you know, no chaser. She's like, <laughs> mm -hmm. I just love her. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love her. I love her. So let's dig in. Let's get into your story here. Let's, um, tell me a little bit about Andy. Um, Tell me a little bit about Andy. Okay. The man. I, I guess it starts off with birth. You know, uh, as you mentioned, I was born HIV positive and uh, I got it from my mom, um, who essentially she got it from a partner that mm -hmm. uh, she kind of, my, my mom and my dad uh, had an on and off relationship. So when they were off, mm -hmm. obviously she saw somebody else and mm -hmm. the person, I guess, didn't share his status her and, and um, sure enough he passed away from AIDS and back in the 90s there was no real strict HIPAA laws like there is now so you know health department came knocking on her door and said hey so and so just died and he listed you as I guess his girlfriend and maybe you should get tested and wow. she, uh, she got tested uh, came back positive but she kind of ignored it and didn't tell anybody until eventually I got sick and then uh, when I got sent to another hospital um, that wasn't the one I was born in. They was like, let's, we can't find out what's going on with him, so let's try an HIV test. And, you know, the denial came, oh, he don't need an HIV test. He's two years old. Wow. Sure enough, came out of the bag <laughs> that I was positive. Wow. Essentially, that's when people knew, hey, he yeah. didn't just get HIV, you know, out of nowhere, so maybe you right. should Wow. So th there's a there's a huge stigma behind mm -hmm. the diagnosis, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I can only imagine, I mean, obviously, I can't think for anyone, but I can only imagine, you know, the, um, the fear, the um, embarrassment, the, it, it, you know, it just wasn't something, you know, I mean, I'm older than you are. So, so back in the day, you know, um, there was just a lot of shame behind mm -hmm. it and um, denial and all those other things, right? And so mm -hmm. you didn't just talk about it. Um, and I shared with Lady Bird, I said, you know, for a long time, we thought it was a gay man's disease or a gay mm -hmm. white man's yeah. disease. Yeah. So it had to have been very difficult, you know, to to tell 
this is what I know is going on with myself or my child or my whomever, my partner, right? Yeah. Um, so when did you actually discover, like, your, for yourself, like, w- was able to, you know, like, make sense of it all that mm-hmm. you were actually born HIV positive? Well, you know, being born with it, I always had doctor's appointments. So I always, um, you know, had to get drilled in information, you know, about what's mm-hmm. going on. Yeah. I was always wondering, like, um, why, you know, we're talking about my medicine. Why did I have to take medicine when I saw all my other friends just, you know, go to bed <laughs> without having to take mm-hmm, it? Yeah. Um, so I, relatively young. Um, and then when my mom uh, finally passed away, that's when I really started to ask questions. I'm like, you know, what happened yeah. to her? You know? Because she, she was yeah. fine that way. So uh, my grandma used to say, you know, that she had, uh, I think it was ulcers. And I never, as a five-year-old, knew what ulcers was. So I used to tell mm-hmm. her. That's what she died from. And then I mm-hmm. had to know what else, you know? So it was always mm-hmm. a for me. Wow. So how old are you? Let me let me ask this. How, how old is your age? 28. 28? Yeah. Okay, so 28. So you're like, I mean, back 28, 30 years ago, it's kind of like that first generation yep. of babies actually being born yep. um, HIV positive. Mm-hmm. Wow. Like, that is huge. Yo. Huge, huge. <laughs> oh my God. So along the way, you've obviously met other young people, right? Much like yourself, right? Mm-hmm. So how is that community? How ha- has it been supportive for you? As far as uh because I didn't really start telling people about my status mm-hmm. until before. Um, and that's just kind of what oh. I, felt. I felt that yeah, it was just recent. I just felt the need to just get this weight off my shoulders, you know, because yeah. people would always ask me, how'd your mom pass away? And I always have to find excuses and why yeah. you take medicine and things like that. Um, so it was just like, I'm sick of it, you know? And then I was sick mm-hmm. of seeing Facebook posts about like, you know, Magic Johnson and there'll be jokes about it, but it'll be like untrue facts about HIV. Mm-hmm. So once I started to tell people, you know, about my status, um, that's when I, um, I started to see a lot more support, you know, from, yeah. you know, um people realize that you know because initially in my I, I made a facebook post to say okay. my and wow people, Ow, you know that you really have hiv a lot of people couldn't believe it <laughs> yeah yeah the thought that they think of when they hear hiv mm-hmm. wow okay so so when you decided i mean i you know i know that it had to have been like this huge weight right that was lifted mm-hmm. but when you decided like what led up to it what what was that thing you were just like you know what i'm done here we go. I'm telling my truth. So it's weird because when me and my wife first uh, got together, um, you know, I things got a little steamy. And I was like, let's slow down so I can introduce you <laughs> to my world. So uh, that's when I told her about my mom and being born HIV positive. And then mm-hmm. we met at college. So the next uh, semester, she started to, uh, she wants to take an HIV science class. Um, and that way she can learn more about, you know, what's going on with me and how to, you know, help things. And so, mm-hmm. uh, she had a moment where I guess she asked the teacher, she's like, hey, my boyfriend, he's HIV positive. I will, he's a comedian, too. I would love for him mm-hmm. to maybe come in and talk to the class. And when she brought it up to me, I'm like, why are you telling her this? <laughs> like, <laughs> before I was open about it. So um, I don't like saying no. So I was like, OK, yeah, I'll go do it. And uh, I was, I remember, like, she gave me time to prepare myself. I wrote, like, jokes five minutes before the, the I had to go and talk. And sure enough, people asked for some material, and it worked. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. I, I think there might be something in this. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Um, because you're making, you, you know, I don't want to say you're making light, but you're bringing laughter mm-hmm. to a very, very heavy conversation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, and I think that there's something beautiful about being able to laugh about some things and not being, I mean, just doom and gloom. Right. It is. This This is the life. This is my life. This is what I'm given. This is what I have that I have to face. So, you know, yeah. you have two what options. People, yeah. People, uh, as soon as they hear comedy and HIV, immediately people want to get offended. And I always tell people yeah. making fun of HIV. I'm making fun of how I see life living with HIV, you know, yeah. But, it can be funny, you know? Wow. Okay. So, you know, last night, um, 
I think it was last night, night before last, one of the two. I checked you out when you were mm-hmm. speaking with um, your cousins and mm-hmm. um, Heidi, Heidi, she jumped on and mm-hmm. it was so funny. It was, it was just it was great. Um, mm-hmm. And I know you were discussing with your cousins, like w- their response whenever they found out that you were HIV positive. And this is, now we're talking, I didn't realize it was not that long ago. Yeah. So um, I'm sure that there were a certain amount of family members that kind of knew, of mm-hmm. course, and then there are the other ones that don't really know. So yeah. how do you think that your family members that didn't know, how do you think they overall responded to your, your, your speaking out? Because you're outspoken about it. It's not just yeah. like pull them to the side and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, this. A lot of my family, well, not a lot of them, but a few of my family members, including like my grandma, she was kind of hesitant on me doing that because mm-hmm. it was the thought of, oh, he's talking about something that, you know, brought us a lot of pain, you know, seeing my mom yeah. pass away from AIDS. Um, same thing with like her sister, you know, she thought of my mom as like her own daughter. So mm-hmm. they kind of had a hard time kind of, uh, supporting the yeah, yeah. Of me telling material about life with HIV until mm-hmm. they actually saw like or heard some of my material and saw some. Yeah. Them. And it was like, oh, that's not too bad. It's actually kind of fun. <laughs> And so that that, that, that was good. always the, the 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 struggle, I guess, when I first started was just how can I reel people in so that you know, because especially in the black community, we really don't like talking about things like HIV. Ooh, yes. <laughs> so it, yes. it's a struggle. Of how can I reel in people to kind of hear the message and kind of know that it's okay to laugh? Like whenever I tell jokes, mm-hmm. people are like, and it's like, no, I'm a comedian. We want you to laugh. We're not yeah. trying to embarrass the laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you 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 said something. You said a word there because in the black community, we really don't want to talk too much about you know um, the serious things like HIV, um, even cancer. I mean, we just there's so many things we just don't really want to talk about, right? Yeah. Why do you think that is like so prominent in our community? Um. I don't know. I, I want to say maybe just stigmas, to be honest with you, as far as like mm-hmm. HIV and stigmas, because as you mentioned earlier, people thought HIV was a white gay man disease. And, you know, yeah. black people uh, in a lot of ways don't want anything to deal with, you know, the gay community. And yeah, it, it's just it's not that's not all what, you know, diseases are about, you know, it, yeah. it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. I I worked in the. um I work for HOPWA. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's for, it's housing opportunities for those living with HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. And so in that, I would, I met a lot of people that were alone, that were um, separated from family, estranged from family, um, living in secret, you know, Mm -hmm. and I was having to help them to, to um, acquire housing and keep housing and get funding for housing so that they could live an amazing life. Yeah. Um, and in that space, I learned about how, like people just couldn't talk about it. Um, mm-hmm. And I always respect that. Like if that's, you know, you don't want to talk about it, respect that. But I mm-hmm. just oftentimes think like, what if you were able to, would you, and like how much better would you feel, um, you know, that you didn't have to carry this and you could just be yourself and be free. That um, was- <laughs> yes. 23 on down or 24 on down. That was me. Yeah. Like- I just thought about, all right, what are the benefits of me telling people about my status? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's real. HIV is real. It's mm-hmm. it's real. It could be, it, and I, I shared this with Lady Bird, it could be me, it could be the next, it could be any of us. It's real. So we need to just be able to talk about it. I mean, yeah. of course, in your own time, but we have to be able to have conversations about this. Mm-hmm. And even with people that's not HIV positive, we have to be able to talk about it so that we better understand the virus. We understand that people with HIV live regular, normal lives, and they could be our friends, our family, our neighbors, and we don't need to treat them any differently. That's why I appreciate what you're doing, because I'm like, you bring it right home. Like, you captivate us with your humor, with these cool little hats, with your wit, and I love it, and you're speaking. Yes, look at all that. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and you're speaking your truth that's going to help so many people. Look at that. I'm reading this. It said, because it's crazy because Andy is one of the most free individuals I know. That is so beautiful. Who's that? Because my comments are. Um, this is the yeah. Mighty Kid Charisma. Oh, okay. That's my guy, Demarcus. Yes. And Miss Monica said, yes, facts. Operative word is normal. That's right. This that's, is like. It's all it is. This is our life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
All right, Andy. So, so tell us a little bit more about about life growing up, like as a as a teenager, right? Um, how was that as a teenage kid? That you know, I don't know if you, I don't know if you dealt with a lot of illnesses or not. If it was all managed very well, but what was that lifestyle like as a kid? So, I got sick twice. Uh, first okay. time, found out <clears throat> being HIV positive, and the second time, I guess it's just kind of still adjusting to my medicine. Um, mm -hmm. And then after that, I was fine. Um, however, it was still the, I guess the, the confidence, you know, the, mm. when I was growing up, my mom, I remember telling me um, to kind of keep the HIV on the hush hush because, you know, she was scared to have people yeah. know her status. So it was kind of ingrained in me that nobody should know about my status besides like mm -hmm. close family and friends. Um, so as far as like being a teenager, I was kind of, I would talk to girls and, you know, be real flirty and things like that, but I was always afraid to date them just because yeah. of the fact that I knew I would have to tell them, you know, yeah. what I'm living with. Mm -hmm. I can see you being flirty, Andy. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have such a beautiful personality. So, <laughs> so, so it's interesting because guess what? I know a lot of individuals that are in a different lifestyle, right? And if they're HIV positive, they, some of them are very open about their status, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're open, they are constantly educated, and they've done this for a very long time. Um, but how is it as a straight man, right? Because I know you say you have a wife. So as a straight man, <clears throat> how was that, you know? Because some people just can't get, they, it doesn't go, right? What in their head they believe looks like the average person or the person that would have HIV. So how was that? Um, uh, very difficult. That's why I believe I waited until I was an adult to tell people that yeah. I was positive. Um, just because, you know, my school did have gay people and it was yeah. actually very strange because there was a, a guy, you know, he was like maybe a year under me in high school. He, his mm -hmm. name mention his name but he was a gay guy and he actually yeah. looked like me you know glasses skinny yeah glasses, whatever and i didn't want to be like hey i'm hiv positive and then all of a sudden now they're putting two and two together yeah yeah necessarily you know yeah so um <clears throat> it's always kind of a struggle just kind of telling people hey i am a straight black man living with hiv yeah yeah, yeah. Hey. um when, yeah. when so when I first started keeping it positive, I, I got into the Las Vegas Review Journal, which is our newspaper here. Nice. Yeah. I was uh, carrying it, you know, as me and my wife we were walking on the strip, you know, walking home. I was wearing my straight out of stick and shirt. And uh, oh. the guy looks at it and he goes, what does that mean? Uh, straight out of stick. And I told him, I, you know, I'm a comedian talking about it. And he reads the newspaper and he looks at me and looks at my wife and he goes, and that's your girl? And I said, <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then he looked at me and he goes, and you ain't sick? And no, and this is before COVID, so I'm like, I hope not. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I deal with that a lot. And I always yeah. have to tell you know, guys that reach out to me, I'm like, hey, just letting you know, I got a wife. I'm, yeah. you know, gay. So yeah. I mean, I respect you, but respect that I'm straight as well, you know? So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 It's, I bring it up because, again, I work in the, in the, industry for so mm -hmm. long or I worked in that particular field mm -hmm. and um and of course my clients were straight men women mm -hmm. and I had some that were in you know the alternative lifestyles in the and so it didn't matter right it didn't matter what, what they looked like none of that mattered right but I realized that there was always this stigma that people just assume mm -hmm. you know so I wondered for you like how was how was that because I know that people will assume anything um, yeah. just because I think there is this um bias that some people have, right? And um, and they have this, you know, they're just uneducated. This is why I believe that having these types of conversations, um, and I say it again, normalizes this in our homes, and and it and it allows, you know, like I know my gener my children's generation didn't really grow up with HIV present, um, like constantly talking about it in school, like I did when I was coming up, right? Yeah. Um, but this allows for them to see and to know that it could be any of us. There is no particular cookie cutter person that um can live you know or contract this virus right so and, and then you were born with it it wasn't like you know you were just like oh i'm just gonna go do this and or i'm shooting up heroin it was none of that <laughs> like you were at the the bs first <laughs> yeah yeah 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So let's take a spin for a second. Cause you know, how you doing Larry? So, you know, um, so let's talk about these hats because now you like this, you're a comedian, you know, you got an amazing voice and a message and then you got these amazing hats. Let's talk about that. These, uh, how you, how, when'd you start this? <laughs> uh -huh. So hold on, I'll, I'll even put it on. So my yeah was, where is it? uh given to me uh my high school had a talent show and i decided to do like a michael jackson type of bit because i played piano as well and so okay. my mother gave me this hat which also became my cap and gown from college so oh, i love it yeah i love it <laughs> so, uh and then uh he gave it to me and i was just like you know what i kind of like these and i never gave it back to him <laughs> so yeah I, yeah yeah, uh, yeah but um yeah, uh, he once he gave me that, I was like, it's kind of a nice fit. So I started collecting more, and then five became 10, and 10 became 43. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they definitely are a part of you. They're <laughs> definitely a part of you. Thank you. So All right, I, so. I always wear them backwards just because everybody wears them forward, and to be Andy Fitz, you just got to do it backwards. Hey, it's all good. I love it. <laughs> So the mighty kid charisma said the hats are infamous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about your comedy. Um, this is your thing. So mm -hmm. what, like, what made you start using the comedy? Like when you said you this, this, I'm going to tell my story mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell it through comedy. And how did you know you had that thing? how did you know you were onto it? So, I, I, it was funny. I had a fear of public speaking at first. And then, really? I, yeah. Uh, however, <laughs> he, I, I went to college uh, and uh, I met a guy named Larry. And Larry was always the goofball, the class clown. And I kind of naturally gravitated to him. And we would always try to yeah. one up each other. And so we were watching Kevin Hart's Laugh at My Pain. And we just, we was like, oh, mm. this. So we created a, a, a comedy club. And our first show was kind of a spinoff of that. You know, name laughing my pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sports dying anguish. <laughs> I remember that specific. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I did my thing. It was non HIV material at first. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. spoke about being skinny and, you know, dating a big girl because that's college mindset, you know. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember the joke uh, had like one guy literally running up and down the aisles just laughing. And I was like, you know. <laughs> I think this is my thing. <laughs> so yeah, like, I just kept trying to get better and better. Yeah, yeah. And then you decided, like, I'm going to start talking about HIV. Mm -hmm. And you put that in there. And your first show that you realized that you connected with people, mm -hmm. what was that like? Um, I think it was, actually, it was quite the opposite. Um, I did a, a black lounge here in Vegas. I won't mention the name. But... Mm -hmm. uh, at the uh I did like a, a joke about the venue. That's usually how I start mm -hmm. live shows. And then uh I started saying, Hey, my name is Andy Fitz, I'm the first ever, blah, blah, blah. And everybody just started looking at me like like deers in the headlights, like, oh my God. Yeah. And I was mm -hmm. finished my set, but like everybody started talking, nobody really started laughing. And I just walked yeah. through, like, all right, like you said, how can I connect these people? So I always try mm -hmm. to make sure my writing became better so I can still make HIV more relatable because I do everyday life with HIV. Mm -hmm. so. Wow, wow, wow. And so you came back a couple more times mm -hmm. and you, you, you realized that you're able to educate people and make them laugh and talk about something that is real to you. Mm -hmm. So like with my social media platforms, like I, I tell people like I hate when people make social media about perfection, like your life is all mm. and you know, it's always good things. And I, I always share it with people. Like sometimes I get in depressed mode, you know, and sometimes yeah. I, I, I need mental breaks and mm -hmm. I'll make sure that people know that like this keeping a positive thing did not start off sunshine and roses. <laughs> like it, yeah. a lot of time chipping away at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so after your show, um, mm -hmm. Have you ever had anyone just come to you and, and tell you, you know, that, that they can relate or to tell you, like, thank you, you know, for what you just said? A lot of times. And I still get those. Um, I had a friend, yeah. uh, one uh, lives out here. I won't mention her name because mm -hmm. but she was saying yeah. 
yeah, my mom's living with HIV and I really appreciate it. And I had a mm. guy in Chicago saying I was living with HIV and didn't know how to deal with it. I have strangers from mm -hmm. from all over the place just messaging me saying, hey, you know, I love what you're doing and I've been depressed and living with this thing or I've been born with HIV and never found anybody born with HIV. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it's mind blowing to me because, I mean, I wanted to inspire, but I never knew that it would like be this big, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you inspire me. Um, you and so many others that are so courageous and, you know, you you fight to live in your truth. Mm -hmm. And I think that so many of us can learn from you because, you know, we hide the smaller things and we feel like, oh, you know, we're not enough or this and we see ourselves differently and can't accept ourselves. And mm -hmm. then we run across a person like yourself and many other advocates that are fighting to stand in your truth. Like you just want to be able to speak your truth and live this beautiful life that you, that God has given you to live. And that's what you do. And so you inspire me to be able to say, you know what? It's okay. Mm -hmm. I can accept the small, you know, cause I look at, I'm like, why, why don't, why am I complaining about these tiny things when, mm -hmm. you know, I could just be, I could stand up and, live my truth as well and so i think it's amazing thank you for inspiring so many of us oh, oh, thank, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so for you guys that are watching go ahead and share this out we're going to continue to chat a little bit more with andy but i want to make sure y'all share it out keep showing us some love they're showing all the love thank you thank you thank you um <laughs> i love it i love the i love the love i love the love i always say you know these conversations are priceless right and and they should come with a charge sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. But since we don't charge, I'm like, just show us some love. Like, that's the charge. Show love, yeah. share it out, and support and follow um, these amazing people that come on to this show to tell their stories. Um, because it's a blessing for me. I always take something from it. And I've been watching you for this last couple, this last week or so. And I'm just like, dang, this boy is something. He's magical. <laughs> 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 yes, you are magical. You're magical. I love that. So so let's talk a little bit more. I mean, you know, I want to know like like your everyday life now. Like what 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 are you doing, you know, other than writing funny stuff? <laughs> That's really like my poor wife. I, I always uh, kind of have to be like, "Hold on, I'm doing some anti-fed stuff." Yeah. <laughs> but she she understands now that this is yeah. the life I'm trying to set up for, you know. Um Yeah. I've been doing a lot of, uh, me and my manager, uh, we're actually trying to set up a tour for next year. Um, I have something major that I don't want to mention because I'm not okay. into, but next year, all I'll say is okay. watch TV next year. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Yes. Um, but yeah, uh, got that coming up. Uh, it's just a lot of things. My 10 year comedy anniversary mm -hmm. actually next March. Um, actually that 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. So wow. It's old. Um, yeah, that is dope. That is so dope. <laughs> um, <laughs> that is super dope. Kind of set up everything for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so well, do you do a lot of shows out there in Vegas? No, because I actually used to have a bit where I say, uh, last year it was real popular where I say, uh, don't invite me because we got this COVID vaccine. I mean, this COVID pandemic and one more virus in me, you call me lime wire. So. <laughs> 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 so are you doing like virtual um shows now yeah smart man <laughs> yeah smart man so i'm going to take another pivot i know you said you're married and um you have a you have a dog mm -hmm. um any kids in the future in the future yes um now yeah. no i don't need a little text yeah. i mean uh blessing children <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, because I, I just feel I, I I would owe them my time and right mm. constantly constantly on the, you know the move trying to get them yeah. together you know yeah smart man smart man that's very smart yeah. <clears throat> I have two adult children and and I made sacrifices because of because of them I was like you know I you you want to give them mm -hmm. the time that you know they're gonna need mm -hmm. um, versus you know, doing your own thing. So I think you're very smart. <laughs> yeah, cause my very, very smart. We're trying to do like a, a 50 state tour, um, hit all 50 states. Um, two wow. Um, okay. So 
just constantly being on the move, I wouldn't want to leave my wife with the kid while I'm in the hotel, yeah. whatever the case is. Yeah, yeah. So that means I can see you coming here to, D to the D.C. area. Definitely can. Definitely You will. got to come here. You got to come here because cause I'm coming out there. Yeah. Okay. Math, vaccine, whatever I need, I'm coming uh -huh. in my bubble. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely going to come in the hazmat. <laughs> yes, for sure, for sure, for sure. I think we're going to need that. Um, one of the doctors that I interviewed, he's out there in Vegas, and mm -hmm. he keeps me feeling like I need to be in a bubble. So, yes, um, that's what I'll be doing. Yeah. Um, so, 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 so let's talk just a little bit more about um, your message that you want people to, I guess, to garner from the things that you do and, and the life that you've lived, Andy. Um, so I always tell people, I, I go by the three E's, which is, um, empower, entertain, and educate. Um, just because, you know, empowering, because there are people living with HIV. Um, I was the same way where I was just, you know, Hydea was a huge, you know, hero for me because she was mm -hmm. you know, 10 years older than me, but she told me her, her age on my life. So I'm sure she's okay with it. But, yeah. You know, yeah. it was just seeing somebody like close to my age that, you know, I can relate to that was also born HIV positive. But other than mm -hmm. that, I didn't have, you know, people like that, you know, um, mm -hmm. growing up as a teenager, you know, when we had health class and they would always make HIV like the most deadliest thing that anybody can have. And it's like, well, yeah. what about me? <laughs> I'm still, yeah. like, you know, um, so, yeah, that's that's usually the message as far as like edge. Uh, educating you know people still living by these stigmas people still you know we live in an age where computers in our pocket but people don't understand that there's new information about hiv that's not the same yeah. 30 years ago and as far as like empower i mean educating power entertain you know just making it fun to learn about hiv you know it's yeah we're so used to you know the the seminars and the q and a's and things like that mm -hmm. but why can't we make it fun you know so why can't yeah. we yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I would love, um, I, w I always want people to walk away with something, right? I always want people to walk away with something. And I love subject matter experts. That's what you are. Um, so I would love to talk briefly, mm -hmm. um, if at all possible, about being undetectable, um, um, not being able to, to transmit. I just would love for you to educate those that are viewing and listening and sure. the ones that may hear this in the future. Um, mm -hmm. What is that exactly? So the stigma of HIV is that a lot of people think they can't date anybody with HIV because they all automatically get it. And that's mm -hmm. the case in most regards. Um, with people living with HIV, if they take their medicine consistently, um, then more than likely they their HIV will become undetectable, which means that um, you basically can't see the uh, HIV virus in like blood tests. And when you're undetectable, that also means that you cannot transmit the virus to anybody else. So you can be in a you know loving relationship. Um, I still promote you know safe sex, even uh, undetectable, um, just because, you know, you never know what anybody else may have. Um, however, as far as HIV goes, you're basically, if you're taking your medicine, you basically put the uh, HIV virus in a hibernation mode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is okay for people to date, totally. even though their status is HIV positive. Totally, totally. As so when, not, when someone... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, as long as, you know, you're kind of pushing the other person, not pushing, that's not the best word to use, encouraging the other person to take their medicine. Mm -hmm. It'll be fine. Yeah, everybody will be fine. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, just, just understanding that a person that's undetectable, um, I, I guess for, it, it is frightening, right? Because, again, it's the unknown. You don't know, right? We we saw HIV and then death, right? That was, that was really what yeah. we saw. We didn't see HIV in life. Mm -hmm. right yep. and so for me i've been blessed to see life and and that's why this is so important to me i see you and i see so many others and i have friends and family members that are very close to me that i see life in right and so i know it's possible and so i this is why i want to make sure like it's, it's different when it's coming from me that's not my status mm -hmm. so if it's coming from me you know it's just a bit different but i love it when someone is standing in the shoe and they can tell them tell people that are listening like no this is really you know a thing like being undetectable is a thing and this is how that is achieved mm -hmm. my uh yeah. my, yesterday on my live uh brought up something that 
I did not know that he thought it was. It was um, he was talking to my cousin about how my mom passed away and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, AIDS, and he couldn't believe it. And she said, well, you know, that's how Andy, you know, he has HIV. And he said he immediately thought, oh, man, my cousin. And, you know, yeah. I didn't think that. <laughs> I didn't think that he thought like that, you know. Yeah. yeah. People, you know, it's, it's the stigmas that people yeah. it's have to re-educate. I think somebody said that. Some, we got to re-educate people about what HIV really is now. Yeah. Yeah. I think you, we have to re-educate. I'm, <clears throat> I'm always open to learning more mm -hmm. um, about any, any, any and everything, to be honest with you. Um, anything that has a stigma around it, I'm like, let me learn more so that I can not judge people or misjudge them because of lack of knowledge. Yeah. So um, I make it my business to become close to people that are open about whatever they're dealing with um, so that I can see, try to see life as close to the lens that they're seeing it through as possible. Mm -hmm. I can't always stand in your shoe, but I definitely can share space with you and try to understand it like, okay, you know, I, I got it now. I'm the same. So, so okay. yeah. And I'm just saying that, like, that is super important. You said that you're the same. Yeah, because uh, yeah. there's a uh, two herpes advocate, uh, Amber and Shayna. Um, they mm -hmm. they uh, have a page called Herpes Could Never, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, constantly learning from them because you know, essentially, we're kind of going through the same thing, the same stigmas that people were living with about STIs, yeah. and you know, it all comes to we're all people. <laughs> you know, we're all we're all people. Yes. Got to go through something, you know, so mm -hmm. HIV, it may not be herpes, but it might be something else. It could be cancer, mm -hmm. diabetes, whatever the case is, but mm -hmm. can't treat people as people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And if, if you hug, if I hug you, I'm not going to get what you have. Mm -hmm. Now we do have COVID. So yeah. <laughs> that's, now that's real, real. <laughs> I told people like uh, before COVID, like I could cough on you and you don't get a but now, right. because if they call on me, I go, oh my God. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like a cough of death, a kiss of death. That is not HIV, you know. Yeah. Um, nor is it, well, I don't want to say it's not herpes, but it's not always herpes either. <laughs> oh, I was, uh, you know, kind of just shaking my head at the amount of uh, comedians talking about a virus that is killing millions of people. Wow. <laughs> and I, was wow. Just, huh. I mean, about two years ago when I first started this thing, you know, people were looking at me like, why are you talking about a virus that's killing millions of people? Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, mm -hmm. where, where's the, 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 the hypocrisy, you know? Oh my <laughs> goodness. Yes, yes, yes. But it, it is real. It is so mm -hmm. real. Um, you, you brought up Hadia, uh, and like I said, I listened to her on your show, but of course I'm, a, I'm of the age that I was able to watch her on Oprah, you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> um, and her story is amazing mm -hmm. and there to just inspired so many people, I'm sure to live in their truth. She talked about living and it was beautiful, just young and just the way she thought, and to see her on your um, live, I was just like, oh, my God. Yeah. This is exactly, I can, I, it makes sense. This is the young girl that I remember seeing as a kid, you know? I saw that me and Hydea lived in the same state. I was like, yeah. you have to get in contact with her. Because I was like, this yes. is a girl of mine. I, I knew her from watching Nickelodeon. Uh, she was on Nick, uh, Nick News with Magic Johnson, talking about Yeah. HBO. And I was just like, I remember I was so nervous. <laughs> I was like, hey, um, my name is Andy Feds. I'm the first ever, blah, blah, blah. And I just would love to, you know, just be able to connect. And, mm -hmm. she was, you know, she gets a lot of weird men. You know, yeah, of course. Yeah. Things. So I get it. <laughs> so I had yeah. to myself be like, hey, I'm not trying to be weird. I just want to connect. <laughs> how, how much you mean to me, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and you know what? You're that same person for someone else. Yeah. Yeah. You are that same person for someone else. People are watching you. I shared I shared your um, bio and um, your story with a few people that I know that are living the same lifestyle and the same life. And, mm -hmm. and they are, you know, they're in, sh in the shadows. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so my heart always go out to them because 
I know that life could be better if they could just be free. And um, in small circles, they can be free. And you should see how they flourish and they blossom. And I shared your information. And one of my friends sent back and said, thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing this. So they're watching you too. <laughs> they uh, are watching. I want to... Always very, very careful and meticulous. That's why I, uh, in the earlier I mentioned, you know, that I always tell my wife, you got to stop talking to me one second because I want to make sure yeah. every word that I post on social media is the right word because, you know, yes. there are a bunch of people watching. And, uh, and again, that baffles me because, you know, I'm a you know kid from the south side of Chicago and I got people yeah. from all over the world just saying, hey, I appreciate what you're doing. So I'm always very curious, not curious, uh, careful about, you know, just... Yeah making sure that I connect with people the right way, you know? Yeah. Good. Because I'm telling you, we, you know, people live vicariously through you. They'll live vicariously through your boldness, through your courage, through your words, through your strength. And they'll just sit and watch you and root for you because, you know, they're not there yet. So yeah. they want, they want you to continue to lead. They, you know, that's just what it is, right? Yeah. People, this is who we are. And this is what we do. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what you're facing. There's someone always watching, someone yeah. always listening. Yeah. You're inspiring people. So I I mean, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you because um, just sharing your story helped some friends of mine. So it, it there was, uh, as I mentioned, I kind of, since the pandemic, only been doing like open mics virtually. Um, so mm -hmm. Instagram uh, open mic that I did and I was doing my material and the guy completely turned me off. And he was like, mm -hmm. uh, y'all, I'm sorry, but that just wasn't funny. And I could have been offended by it, but I was like, you know what? I understand. A lot of people may not be ready for it. A lot of people got different senses of humor. Yeah. But when I got off his live, 17 people from his live followed me right after. <laughs> so it was like, I did, I did my job. You know, my job was, yep. like, if I can't reach him, my job is just to inspire one person. And, <sighs> you know, I did what I came to do. That is it. I love it. That is it. I'm going to read just a couple things here. Let's see. I can't see this anything. is actually, I know. So this is from my sister. My sister's on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sis, for joining. She said, yes, re-educate yourself in all areas when it comes to health and health care. So much change and updated information out there. Um, I might have lost it for us um, to enlighten ourselves with. Thank you, sis. You are so correct. Um, another brother said, knowledge is power. Another one said, be free. Congratulations on your success. Um, I've been positive for 10 years and none of my family knows. Wow. Only close friends. God be with you. Um, each one, reach one. They have to see their selves beyond their everyday situation. <sighs> wow. This is what we do this for, Andy. This is what we do this for. Exactly. I tell people. This is it. Like, you know, I wish I, I really wish I could say what I need to say for next year, but I can't. But yeah. for whatever I'm going to do next year, <laughs> again, just yeah. watching. But uh, I tell people, like, all this, all this that I'm doing is not for me. It's not for mm -hmm. fame or money or anything like that. Um, even, like, when I sell shirts, it's, you know, the proceeds go to, like, two of my uh, nonprofits that I really support. Um, yeah. But it's all about helping others, you know, uh, mm -hmm. as read earlier you know i want to make sure that people don't die the same way my mom did out of you know fear of stigmas and embarrassment you know yeah 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 so i'll I, she's um our viewer said it's so hard but thank y'all life is so hard well, we are here to support you mm -hmm. so i know that it gets hard and i'm sure andy would be open to you reaching out you need support i don't want to put you, throw you under the bus andy but no. I always yeah follow, so, follow me yeah yeah, so there's a lot of people that are hurting and are carrying these heavy loads. And so anytime I see someone coming to this box, I'm always saying, don't worry, we got you. I, you can always drop me a DM and anything I can do to help you, I am here. You don't have to go through any of this alone. That's what we do this for. Yeah. Um, one more thing. Let's see. Queenie, thank you for representing <laughs> Well, well, you know, the, I have the easy part. This is the easy part. You know, it, it, the hard part is bringing people on mm -hmm. that are bold enough to tell their story, um, you know, because we're all looked at differently. Yeah. It, it depends on which way it's going to go, but we're all looked at differently. So thank you for being courageous and coming on here. And um, and I, I think it's just who you are. Right. So before we go, <laughs> look at you. Look at that smile. 
<laughs> I hope you guys go out there and follow Andy Feds. Please follow him um, for two reasons. One, because he's educating the masses. And if it's not you that he's speaking to, it may be someone that you know that he's speaking to. And you'll be able to share that information with them. And two, we all got to be nosy enough to see what he got going on next year. Come next, on, y'all. Let's just keep it real. Pay attention. Next <laughs> year, may working on something major. <laughs> okay. So here's where we become nosy. We just got to just stay up there on his page to uh -huh. see what's going on. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so for all my nosy viewers that I love so much, yes, go ahead and follow him so we can see what's going on. And trust me, as soon as I find out, I will be sharing it out. <laughs> <laughs> all okay. right. So hold on one second. Okay. Go ahead. I just go. You can go. Ahead. I just want to read this. If I may, before we check out of here, um, I feel like I owe it to everybody that joined. If I can give you my little free material, as I call it, my little Instagram open mic materials. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you have the free time. I, I have the free time. Why not? Go ahead. We good. So, <laughs> anybody uh, that is not following me, go ahead and press that arrow and uh, hit the follow button. If not, it's considered a hate crime. Uh, <laughs> It's Andy Feds. Uh, I'm the first ever openly HIV positive born stand up comedian. And uh, I, I love what I do because, uh, you know, people are still terrified to talk about HIV and people are scared to talk about HIV when it's not as scary as it used to be. Because back in my day, Naked and Afraid wasn't a TV show, <laughs> it was the women I brought home. You understand what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Also, like, dating was hard being HIV positive, and I think that's why I became a stand-up comedian, because I went to have the ladies not focus on my status, but on Mr. Fedorable himself. You yeah. Know? Oh. And I remember I used to tell them all the time that dating an HIV positive born comedian like myself is a lot like adopting a stray dog. And because it's like I'm cute, you see me on a few flyers in your neighborhood, and you're probably taking me to the doctors to see if I had all my shots. <laughs> um, also, uh, like uh, I, I love what I do. Uh, the only thing I don't love is you know telling people that I lost my mom to AIDS because they always say weird things to you when they find out that you lost a loved one. They'll be like, "Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, she's no longer in pain." Or my favorite one, "Oh, she's in a better place." I'm like, she in a better place. <laughs> Me and my mom, listen, we were born and raised in a scary part of Chicago, called Chicago. And um, in Chicago, <laughs> he was paying about $900 a month for rent. Now, excuse my Christian school education, but they told me God got a mansion in heaven, pearly white gates, streets of gold. Ain't no way God's charging less than $2,500 a month for rent. <laughs> you understand me? You don't get it. Mama is home in heaven. <laughs> Ain't no section eight in heaven. <laughs> also, like I want to, I want to get just as much respect as like diseases like let's say cancer. You know, because cancer gets so much respect that you can tell somebody you got cancer, they'll give you the clothes off their back, the last meal on their plate. You tell somebody that you got HIV, they think you messing around with goblins and gremlins and gargoyles. Probably all three. You can't be out here messing with Grimobla goals. <laughs> cancer gets so much respect that from June 21st to July 21st, it's considered cancer season. It has its own astrological sign. That means between those dates, you can go outside and yell out, it's cancer season, y'all. Same thing with HIV. If I go outside and yell out, it's HIV season, y'all, I'm getting arrested. Like, <laughs> they don't trust me. <laughs> also, like, before I wrap up, uh, I always like to break stigmas. I'll tell people, you know, that I'm married to a woman, you know, four years. Aww. Me and my wife, we, we mesh well together, you know. We have a lot of similarities. However, my ex before her, we had way too many differences between each other. For instance, I'm a dog person. She's a cat person. I'm a person that likes that warm weather. She's a person that likes that cold weather. I'm a Sagittarius. She was a go digger. Doesn't work like that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it messed me broke up because she, she, she told me that she couldn't see herself dating somebody that was HIV positive. It bothered me um, not too much because uh, the very next day karma struck because she uh, actually got hit by a car. Um, I know because I looked in my rearview mirror. Um, <laughs> you know what? 
I'm in it. <laughs> don't cancel me. I don't promote violence. <laughs> I paid the Uber. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I appreciate it. <laughs> you are hilarious. <laughs> and you're Sagittarius. I am too. <laughs> Our season is coming. Our season is coming, Andy. <laughs> I'm December 12th. Oh, I'm December 13th. Shut the front door. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to be celebrating hard. I'm going to be okay. hitting you all the time talking oh, about yeah. birthday and Sagittarius. It's about to go down. They're going to be sick of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, listen, I've had, look, look, everyone is, like, laughing. I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This has to been the, the funniest um, chat I've had. So thank you for that. Um, Andy, I'm going to leave the floor to you. Um, I just want you to speak life into wh whomever out there that's watching, whatever message, whatever that legacy is, whatever that thing is, you got the floor before we call it a night. For sure. Um, appreciate that. Uh, for anybody that is living with HIV, any STD, anything like that, know that it's going to be okay um know that it's okay to go get tested it's okay to check in with yourself you only got one of these once you mess this up mm -hmm. don't get anything else you know so um why not take care of it you know um life is short so why not take care of your body um also know that um it's okay to, to learn um for mm. You know, don't know certain things. It's okay to ask questions. Um, it's better to ask questions than to ignore things, you know, because then mm -hmm. spreading stigmas, spreading ignorance, uh, or just not knowing. Um, and then also just trying to kind of changing gears here. Um, Andy Feds Comedy, uh, dot com for anybody that want to follow. Yeah. Get Andy Feds Comedy. Um, I sell t shirts, um, hoodies. Uh, and uh, keep a child alive. Uh, tank tops. Oh, that is inside out. <laughs> keep a child alive. <laughs> tank tops. Um, keep a child alive is uh, the organization that I support. Actually, founded by Alicia Keys, um, mm -hmm. where they help families affected by HIV. That and uh, Junior Council, which is also another one I support. And uh, when you buy a T-shirt from my website, uh, those proceeds go to those families that you know, so that can be able to get medicine, regardless if they can pay for it or not. Wow. Wow, Andy. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. I believe that you thank you for going to support. Absolutely, One Shinies. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Larry, look, Larry is always on it for me. He is over here plugging your website for me. Larry, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Trust me, I, I appreciate it. He'd be on it, honey. So. <laughs> He's going to become a follower of yours. He okay, is awesome. Sure. So supportive. Yes. So, so, so he and his wife both, they're great, great, great people. Um, so listen, Andy, again, um, thank you so much for sharing this space with me. You are hilarious. Um, but more importantly, I, I love that you are lending your voice to something as serious as HIV mm -hmm. and educating about HIV and AIDS and showing that we can live no matter what the situation is we as long as we have as long as we get up tomorrow we're good we're getting up we're good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're good so i thank you so much for for creating this space so that others may learn and may know you and see a face you know that is living a life um it looks like you're living a life well lived with hiv so <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I am not skinny. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not what HIV is. That people think, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that boy eating good over there. <laughs> All right, Andy. Thank you again. Um, I just had a wonderful time with you tonight. For sure. Thank you so much for having me and just letting me, you know, reach out to other people. Absolutely. Anytime. This is an open door. Anytime you have a promo, anytime you have any new information, hit me up. Let's look, no need to send it to me in text. Just hit that video button and we're going to talk about it real quick. OK, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Have a wonderful night. OK, and to the viewers, thank you so much for tuning in to another chat here at the Relationship Zone. Follow me over to Facebook and on YouTube. Catch more um, interviews.
Oh, I'm sorry. Go follow, ahead. follow, follow. Y'all see him? Go ahead, say it, say it. Follow, okay. follow, follow. Okay. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. Follow, follow, follow. All right, Andy. Have a wonderful night. All right, you too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.